Every time a smart guitar hits the market, there's always one question that comes to mind. Why? Does this bring anything new that players actually want? It may be Wi-Fi enabled, it may have advanced technology, but in a culture so rooted in tradition, is there any real use case for a smart guitar? So that brings us to this Lava ME3 I've been seeing pop up everywhere recently. I've seen everyone from Daryl Braun to Jared Dines play them on YouTube. I've been seeing it pop up everywhere on my Instagram feed. So when Lava reached out and asked if I wanted to try one, my curiosity got the better of me. I need to know, is this good? So huge thanks to them for sending this out for us to check out together, for sponsoring the video. Now, is this the game-changing smart guitar we've been waiting for? Just a collection of fun gimmicks. And most importantly, how does it fare as a guitar? Is it good to play? Let's take a closer look. All right, so the defining feature that they're touting for this guitar is the integrated three and a half inch touchscreen loaded with High Lava OS. It connects to the Undersaddle pickup and then there are a collection of apps that extend the functionality beyond the capabilities of a normal acoustic guitar, all without any external gear. This guitar is your entire acoustic rig Plus, it comes loaded with a tuner, a looper, a recorder, a practice app, an effects app. In the effects, you got presets, you got delay, chorus, reverb, flanger, octaver. It's pretty extensive. So the way I like to put guitar through its paces is by writing something. And with all the built-in features, there should be no shortage of inspiration here. Let's test it out, get some first impressions, see what we can come up with. Okay, so I'll be honest, I am not an acoustic player at all. Chugging on acoustic. It's just not the same. That being said, when in Rome. So rather than try to put this through like the Ingle Savage or something, I'm actually gonna try and write something acoustic. But I have cheated a little bit. I've put this guitar into easy acoustic mode. It's some variation of Open D I learned from Mark Tremonti. D, A, D, A, D, D. Dad, dad. And he was able to get this, uh, I don't know, almost like a 12 string ring uh, with this drop B tuning. And I was like, how the fuck is he doing that? Actually sounds quite good as an acoustic though. The action is quite high and I've looked in the little instruction manual how you would lower the action on something like this, right? Because there's no truss rod adjustment. They say remove the bridge saddles and then sand it down. That's annoying. I'm not gonna do that right now. So we'll just live with it. But playability wise, that's really the only thing out of the box. The frets, good. The fingerboard, really good. I think it's made of carbon fiber. It's definitely not real wood, but it's really smooth. And then it's got a satin finish. I mean, it plays very well. And this is pretty cool. While you're tuning, it gives this little satisfying click when you've got it right. Like that. It would make sense if I set up the other camera. That way you can see what I'm seeing, right? One sec. All right, we're back. Now you can see what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing is a ton of effects. So I've gone into delay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's pretty sick, not gonna lie. Like, that being built into the guitar. All right, let's try Lollipop. That sounds like a fun one. <laughs> okay, I, I guess that sounds like a Lollipop. Shadow? Whoa. <laughs> Reverse delay, passenger. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, Moonwalk. Oh, we got some nice little ambient vibes. This is crazy, dude. Um, sandwich. hippie presets on here. Okay, um, let's actually write something. Maybe put on like a little bit of reverb? Infinite universe? Too infinite. Reverb is just too infinite. You can even do like high cut, low cut. I, I don't really know what I'm doing with these, but fuck it. Credit where credit is due. There's a surprising amount of customization. You know what? I'm just gonna throw in the delay and we'll go from there. <laughs> That's really cool with the delay. <laughs> 
That's a cool little uh, little riff. And then maybe we can do some sort of high melody. Not sandwich preset, I'm, I'm talking pitch. <laughs> Writing in this tuning is so fun, man. Like you can literally not do any wrong. Then you gotta have a, a tension building one. If that makes sense? It makes sense in my head. Uh, like... Or... Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, and then back to main riff. Uh, did we just speed run an acoustic song? Nah, we gotta do something else. I'm determined to make this reverb work. Actually, you know what? I used to have another YouTube channel where I made acoustic covers, and what I'd do is I'd use the guitar as a cajon. So, you know, this is your bass, and this is your snare. Ooh, and this rings in D. <laughs> I was gonna mute this, but I guess I don't have to, because it's in tune. So I'm gonna throw the reverb on, and then just use this as a percussive instrument. <laughs> cool. So I think that's enough ideas. I'm gonna go and work on the demo track off camera and I'll meet you back here after the demo track for my final thoughts. But in the meantime, this is how it all turned out. So I went into this whole Lava ME3 experience with quite a skeptical mindset. I mean, I'm skeptical of the entire concept of a smart guitar. But first and foremost, as a guitar, it's pretty fun. The action is pretty high out of the box, so I'm gonna have to sand the bridge saddle down. And I'm not thrilled about that. But you know, I'm glad it's too high instead of the opposite. It's easier to take material out than to add it retroactively. But this fingerboard is really nice. It feels like a hard, smooth piece of ebony and no complaints about the fretwork either. And everyone talks about the touchscreen functionality, but I think a lot of people are overlooking the benefits of carbon fiber construction. They haven't just done it because, ooh, look how futuristic. Although that's definitely part of it. Space gray, it's the same color as my laptop. <laughs> The great thing about it is it doesn't react like wood to environmental changes. Wood expands in heat, contracts in cold, next bogue, you get fret sprout. Carbon fiber, meanwhile, has low thermal expansion and also a low absorption rate. Basically, hot, cold, dry, humid, it doesn't care. It doesn't give a f it stays the same. Meaning, it's super stable. You never have to adjust the neck, it doesn't even have a truss rod adjustment system, and you can take it to 
places like a campfire without worrying about it. In fact, I think that's the perfect use case for this guitar. You know, you can take this guitar anywhere and it will withstand nature and it's your entire rig. Now, let's talk about the smart features. Yeah, um, they make this guitar really fun. A lot of the built-in presets are wild. You can throw an octaver on there, down tune, that's crazy. <laughs> A lot of the indicator animations are ridiculously nonsensical, but that's okay. Now, the built-in speaker, it's not the best. So when you're using your time-based effects, your delay, your reverb, it's not quite throwing back the full sound that the guitar is making, but it's using the whole acoustic guitar body to project. So it still sounds pretty decent, and it's awesome to have a guitar with, you know, built-in delay, a built-in flanger. In fact, I've been using a lot to do, uh, absent-minded vibey jams when I need a break. Just throwing on a simple delay, a little bit of reverb, it more than does the job. Now, with tech, uh, you sometimes worry about obsolescence, but a benefit of using a proper Wi-Fi enabled OS is they can push updates with more features, performance upgrades, and keep expanding the functionality of the guitar. And in fact, as soon as I turned it on, I was prompted to do just that. So it's good to see that evolution is an element of the experience that Lava is committed to. And while I found the responsiveness of the touchscreen could be a little slow sometimes, like tap tempo is a lost cause. In fairness, it did get better after the update, but the user interface is intuitive if you've ever used a smartphone, and it's generally easy to find and adjust everything. Also, the ear training exercise was strangely addicting. I was just watching the season finale of Better Call Saul and doing the ear training exercise in the background. I'm f***ing good at identifying a C note now. So I think the Lava ME3 is a fun time. I would recommend it most to people like campers, to buskers, to coffee shop giggers, anyone who wants the benefit of having a mini rig built into the guitar. For a lot of people, yeah, it might be a collection of gimmicks, but that doesn't mean it's not really fun. <laughs> So that's about all I have to say about this Lava ME3. What are you thinking? Let me know in the comments down below. And big shout out to my amazing patrons for supporting the channel. Still trying to balance being a content creator with being a new dad and truly the support makes everything possible. If you really like what I do, want to join them, the link to that will be in the description. In the meantime, social media, discord, and affiliate links are in the description. If smart guitar nonsense isn't really your thing, you can click or tap right there for something more traditional. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.